If you take this gin here and mix it with this tonic here in a glass with a lot of ice, you get the taste of this, the Kung Fu Popsicle. And the wizard of flavors, John O'Neill, has done it again, made one hell of a gin. Let's check it out. Hi guys, and welcome to High on Gin. We all know master distiller John O'Neill and his world-renowned series of gin, the Whitley Neal. Uh, the number one selling flavored gin in the UK and probably around the world. But Johnny is a man of many talents. And besides the, being the master distiller at Whitley Neal, he runs a couple of other gin projects simply because he can't help it. And when I met Johnny at the Berlin Bark event in 2019, and by the way, he's the sweetest guy you will ever meet. We also spoke about his two other side projects, the Merrillick Bone uh, Gin that he started in 2016, and his latest project, the Berkshire Botanical Gin that he started in 2019. And the Berkshire Botanical Gin is a project that is done in, well, you guessed it, Berkshire. Uh, this is one of the most beautiful counties in uh, England where Johnny lives today and where you will find places like uh, Windsor Castle, the royal residence. And you also find the Royal Oak, an amazing English country pub with a restaurant named uh, in the Michelin Guide uh, in the section called Point of View. It's situated in the Yaren estate that covers more than uh, 9,000 acres. And here Johnny has put up a small pot still called Harry, named after his son. And here he takes full advantage of some of the botanicals that grows just right outside the door. And today he has done four Berkshire botanical gins. Uh, the dry gin, the slow gin, the rhubarb and raspberry gin, and then this one here, the dandelion and burdock gin. And if you think, why the heck dandelion and burdock. Is this one of those gins where the master distiller is getting rid of some weed in his garden and thought, hey, maybe I can use this in a gin? Well, you couldn't be more wrong because dandelion and burdock has actually been used together since the Middle Ages as a uh, beverage consumed in the, in the British Isles. It was originally a type of light meat, but over the years it has evolved into, well, uh, for example, carbonated soft drinks that companies like Fentimans produces. So Johnny has not gone crazy. Uh, but used these old flavor combination as an inspiration and turned it into a beautiful gin. And as uh, he describes the taste of this gin, it is, has this hint of vanilla, licorice uh, and honey with little citrus and ginger spice. And as I started this video with this gin here, it really, really smells like this one here, the Kung Fu ice cream, and a, a Danish lemonade popsicle that is coated with a thin layer of licorice. One of my all-time favorite popsicles. The sweetness, the licorice, it becomes, you know, like a, a liquid gummy bear, especially if you mix it with a fever tree Mediterranean tonic. But let me underline, it's not artificial and it's not sickening in any way, but it's very, very intriguing. It smells and tastes so good. So if you like your gin and tonic a bit more defined and less sweet than if you use a Mediterranean tonic, let me show you how to serve this one with this little video I did with my very good friend, Gin Biz. You really should try this with a double Dutch Indian tonic and some uh, lemon peel. 
I love it. It's fresh, it's delicious, it screams summer fun to me. And it has this wow effect, especially when Danes taste it. At least, at they immediately recognizes the Kung Fu popsicle uh, taste and smell. So here's to you, Johnny, uh, how I love your small projects and your big ones. Until next time. Everybody was Kung Fu fighting. <laughs>